Okay, what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at how we can create a seamless background uh, for our product renders and then make changes to that background inside of After Effects. So let's get started. All right, so just a little bit about the setup I have here in case you are trying to replicate it. This is a scene I grabbed from the Asset Browser. Uh, however, it was originally built for the standard and a physical render, so I did go through and convert the materials and I that press process started uh, by coming in here and using the uh, convert material so I just did the individual materials convert and replace and then I did convert and replace with nodes for each one and that's how I ended up with these materials and then I also had to go in um, and make some adjustments to the reflectivity to get it the way I wanted uh, and the lighting has been updated as well I replaced kind of the, the lighting cards they had with um, a dome light and an area light. The dome light is once again using something from the asset browser. So here is what we're starting with, okay? Um, not too bad, all right? But what if we wanted to make changes to um, our background here or set it up in such a way that we could modify um, the brightness of it, the color of it, without having to come back into Cinema 4D? And we can do that by using the Redshift object tag. So. Let's see, I can get rid of this and this. What we can do is add the Redshift object tag to our background, which just in case you're not sure what the background looks like, it's just the old curved backdrop, okay? Um, and so when I start this, this is the result, okay? And what ultimately we want to do is get rid of the background, but keep the shadows, all right? And sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, but that's what we're going for here. And like I was saying, we'll be using the Redshift object tag for that. So I'll apply that to uh, my studio here. And it's really the matte section where we're going to be spending a lot of our time. Um, there's definitely some other useful parts of the Redshift object tag, but the matte section is where we will be today. So what I need to do is check override. And then in the general section, check enabled. And now we can see um, our background is gone, okay? So that's a step in the right direction. Um, and really, I forgot to turn this back on, but um, what you will now see is the background um, of the dome light. And so we don't want that, which means in the dome light, we need to uncheck that as well. You may be tempted to adjust the other settings in the environment uh, place here, but we don't really need to do that. Though you could if you were trying to um, get a backplate in here. Um, and so that might be another interesting way to approach this is if you did have an image you wanted to add as the background or or the backplate, you could then enable it and drop it in and you would get those shadows added um, on top there. Um, so for us, we don't want that. We need to come down here to the shadow section and check enabled. Okay, and it doesn't really look like it did anything. Uh, and really at this point, we want to be checking our alpha. So whether you're using the perspective view or perhaps the Redshift render view, make sure you toggle on alpha. And so this is what we have, okay? Not really gonna make much of a difference because it's all white. What we need to do is check effects alpha. And now what we're seeing is not just our objects here, but also the shadows. So that way, when we render this out, um, we will get our shadows in our alpha. And what that looks like is this, okay? So I've saved this out. It doesn't look like anything has been done here, but if I toggle on my transparency grid, this is the end result, right? We can see our shadows, see our products. And if I was to go and add a solid here, make it behind, you can see that it's working. And at this point, you know, I could change the color however I would want to, the brightness of it, however I'd want to, um, you know, just to demonstrate this, could add a hue and saturation. And this is gonna give us a lot more flexibility to make adjustments without having to go back into Cinema 4D and re-render it. But if you look at this, it isn't quite, you know, kind of seamless or infinite because we have this little section right here, right? So if you wanna get rid of that, Instead of the curved backdrop like I have right now, I really just want to keep my plane. 
for the flat polygon. So that's exactly what I'll do. Select that, invert my selection, which, uh, where did it go? There it is, delete that. And I do wanna double check to just make sure my shadows, um, you know, kind of stop there, okay? Because if we have a, an abrupt edge to a shadow, well, that's gonna be visible when we render this out. Uh, so I may need to come back to the studio, go into edge mode. This is a bit tricky to do while rendering, so let's just turn that off. Maybe get out and select this edge. Then just pull it way back, right? That's probably a bit overkill. You get the idea. And like I said, what we want is to get where our shadows stop. And that can be a little bit tricky depending on your lighting. Uh, but if this is a still, there's absolutely some, you know, masking and, and trickery we can do um, to get rid of that. So let's render this to the picture viewer and see what we get. Right, it'll render there. It will eventually update in After Effects. The other thing I should mention about After Effects is when you go to import your background here, um, you're going to get this pop-up, um, really the alpha section here, how you want it to be um, brought in. So I usually just hit yes, though, you know, pre-multiplied does, uh, is the one that works the best since we are working with that black color there. Um, what I can do now is just reload this. And now we'll see we have this seamless, you know, kind of infinite background that once again can make any changes to color wise or whatever. But, you know, this is going to give us the flexibility um, to adjust these colors without it influencing the image itself. Because that's what would happen if we did this in Cinema 4D. Right, if I toggle back to the beauty here um, and just applied, let's just create a material and make it blue, right? Or just some color, it doesn't really matter what. Um, that color is gonna get bounced around, okay? And really impact the way this looks. Now, if we're dead certain, we, we know we're gonna want this color on our studio, then by all means, you know, we can totally work this into the studio, you know, obviously the reflections and, and lighting would want, uh, would need to be adjusted here. But if we know this is what we're gonna want, then great. But uh, you can see just how much of an impact adjusting the ground color or the studio color in this case um, ends up having an impact on our scene. And if we don't want that, well, then using a desaturated color or gray like we had, and then adding the color in After Effects um, is definitely the way to go. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know.